Welcome to Edit Share. In this video, we'll look at flow automation. Flow automation adds an additional layer of intelligence to your flow system. The flow automation application installs on Windows or Mac and allows an administrator to create custom workflows or advanced automations using a graphical interface. Flow Automation's interface is easy to navigate. Let's take a quick look at a few sample automations that we've used in the past. This is the first half of a review and approve workflow. We have a custom metadata field in Flow called Request Approval. If a user checks that checkbox, whether it's in Airflow or Flow Story, Flow Automation will then check another drop-down menu to see who the producer is. Based on that information, Flow might create a small movie for them, place it right in their folder, and send them an email notification, letting them know they should log in and review this clip. The second half of that workflow starts with another metadata trigger. In this case, the field is called Approved, and it's just another checkbox. If a reviewer checks this checkbox, Perhaps that would kick off an automation that has Flow transcode the file to its deliverable format. Perhaps it passes out to a QC server. And based on pass or fail, it either goes straight to air or an email notification gets sent back to the production group with the QC details that need to be repaired. Flow automations can be extremely complex. They can also be extremely simple. For instance, here's a simple two-node automation. Your trigger is a watch folder. If something lands in the watch folder, that will trigger this automation. That could transcode a clip, copy a clip, transcribe a clip, or allow you to execute many other options. It's very simple to design an automation with this graphical interface. I'll create an automation called Web Demo. The first thing we need in a flow automation is a trigger. There are a variety of triggers you can use to kick off your flow automation. You can have a watch folder trigger. If I drop something into a watch folder, an action will take place on those files. A time of day trigger activates an automation at a certain time of day. A metadata trigger could be triggered by any change in metadata. That could be checking a checkbox within Flow, or typing a word into a comments field, or selecting an option from a drop-down menu. A manual trigger acts as a placeholder for workflows you might want to execute manually. A time interval trigger will run on a time interval, for example, every 15 minutes or every three hours. An event trigger can trigger a flow automation based on any of these events. And finally, the external trigger. The external trigger is a way for third-party applications with an API to send an API call to flow to trigger a workflow automation. The external trigger also allows the show and clients option. This is our way of using the API internally. When the show and clients field is checked, this allows users using Flow Story to perform automations on demand. For instance, I have these three automations with external triggers. This would allow a user to directly archive a clip, send it to QC, or transcribe it directly in the application. Once we have a trigger in our automation template, we're ready to start adding inputs and filters. Inputs determine what files we would like to act on. A media space input lets me select a media space and perhaps subfolders containing files I would like to perform actions on. The project input will include every asset in a specific project. This allows you to select everything within a flow project and act on those assets. The search input allows you to define filters and match any or all criteria of any of these filters and act upon those files. So in our example flow automation template, we have a time interval trigger. Let's set that trigger for every 12 hours. Every 12 hours, this automation will trigger and it will search for some criteria of files. Next, we come to filters. Filters include pre-built API modules for Baton and VidChecker QC systems, as well as our own QC product, QScan. This filter allows a file or files to be processed by your QScan server. Then, based on pass or fail outcome of the QC job, the automation would take a different route. We also offer a metadata filter. And while this is similar to a search in that you can add multiple metadata filters, the outcome of matching those filters determines the path the automation will take. The last tab in the design setup is the tasks tab. This includes all of the pre-built modules and all of the things we can do right out of the box. We also offer a script runner module. This allows a user to run their own scripts as part of the flow automation. The schedule window gives an administrator the ability to pause, resume, prioritize, and monitor job status. So Flow Automation is an easy to navigate interface that ties together all of the metadata and different storage locations within your system 
and allows you to execute streamlined workflows. For more information or to start using Flow, please contact this EditShare partner.